Hi guys, it's Uga and welcome back to another video today. Let's make a rant. This is probably going to be one of the worst books I've read in 2022. And it's Here to Us by Becky Abertelli and Adam Silvera. I'm so mad with this book. Like, so mad. They destroyed the What If Is Us. This is going to be a spoiler rant. So if you haven't read the first one and if you want to, skip it out like, subscribe, comment down below saying that you skip it and you watch it after because I cannot make this spoiler free because also because it's a sequel so I have to discuss what happened in the end and also because I need to rant because this book I don't know why why authors continue to do sequels to things that don't need sequels or sequels that don't make sense so let's start with the rant what if it's us ends with Ben and Arthur going away. So in the first book, what if it's us, they meet uh, in this post office, they have a connection, they found each other, they build this relationship for some weeks. For Ben, it's a new relationship after he's been cheating on. And for Arthur, it's his first relationship ever. And after the end, in the end, they come apart because Ben is from New York and Arthur is only there for the summer and is going back to Virginia, to Georgia or Virginia. One of the, those, I don't remember. Um, then we see prologues for each character. Ben talking about Arthur and how he's going to college for writing, creativity and blah, 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 blah. And Arthur is kissing a lot of boys and having fun in the college. Okay, comes the sequel. And what are we expecting? They will find each other in New York for some reason. They will be single and the romance will flourish. No, they go to New York. Yes, they, but they both have boyfriends now. You see how this goes? So Arthur has this boyfriend, Mikey, who is very insecure because he's going to meet Ben and he, he doesn't like the idea because Arthur already broke his heart once before Christmas and it was very bad. And... Yeah, he's insecure. But Arthur says, no, no, that's not going to happen. Ben, on the other side, doesn't know Arthur is coming back. And when he discovers, he starts to have feelings again. But although he's dating this guy named Mario, although he's not dating them because they don't use the word boyfriend, they're just almost friends with benefits, but they like to spend more time together as boyfriends, but they didn't use the word I love you or the word boyfriend. Strangely, Ben never considered move out of the state for Arthur, not even in college because of the money issues, but never like after college, like connect to Arthur. They didn't even talk for some months. And then when they meet by accident, oh, the love is there. Wow, what a revelation. We know that will gonna happen because in the end they will be together. Like it's not, it's not a secret that it's gonna be a happy story. We know there's gonna be heartbreaks. And that's what's frustrating me is like, why did you make them both have relationships that will end up, I just pray, pray, that it's not going to end up with cheating. Because if, if there was a cheating scene, I'll be very mad. Hopefully, there was not not. There was not. But it's like, why make them in a relationship? Because it was awkward. And it was entertaining because we wanted to see more Ben and Arthur do-overs. Like, they go on New York in New Adventures. Or just as friends and saying, like, do you remember this place? And no, because we're always with Mario, we're always with then with Mikey that appeared, and then Dylan. There was this plot that, that Dylan didn't care about Ben, and Ben was very mad because Dylan was cancelling stuff, because he's been living with his girlfriend for almost a year in college, and I was like, let me guess. He, she's knocked up and what, the reason why he's missing is because he's going to disappointments for the doctor and he's going to have a baby. Wow, I'm so smart. Exactly what it was. And I was like, damn, I'm so damn smart. I should go to writing because that is so normal to happen. Like, really? Like, couldn't you make a better excuse? Yeah, so we don't have Dylan, which was the clown of the group a lot. We don't have Arthur and Ben alone. So... Yeah, and then it comes like the feelings after two years and after almost, I don't know, six months or more without talking at all and some months that you didn't talk as much. So they, I think they only connect a lot for the first year. So there are still feelings there if you are dating with someone else. It is worth it. Uh, and then it, 
it was just frustrating to see them not talking about their feelings like we are so mature i didn't think they the the age was done well because they only aged them two years so they are 18 i think the book will benefit if it was towards an adult like they were around 23 or 24 they have new experience they have one or two new boyfriends they are in different states of their lives not like two years because two years is not enough space to mature because they are doing the same thing they did as a teenagers so i think that was very lacking on character development and then uh i don't know it was so weird i was expecting so much of a romance because the first one felt much like a rom-com like we meet and then we try to find each other and this one lost the rom-com everything was lost uh, i don't know the characters and then in the end okay we ben uh, one of the things that really bothered me was ben new Arthur, love of his life and everything never considered like moving out of the state trying to find a way to be more with him uh you know vacations on anything and then for this boy mario who, who is dating okay more time but it's not dating because they are not boyfriends you know what i mean is willing to leave college give up on college and go all over the other coast because he says he thinks he's the best for him like what and then you didn't fight for arthur it didn't make sense it didn't make sense Okay, by the end, things start to result and then the authors do another prologue. Why I think it's bad? I don't like prologues that skip over the years because I think they are not well done, typically. And specifically because this whole book could be a prologue for the first one. Imagine, the first one skipped uh, six months, one year after Arthur and Ben met, right after they leave. Why not make, like, six months, Ben, one year, Arthur, Two years ban, and those two years is the first, like, um, they meet again in New York, which is the beginning of this book. Uh, two years uh, in a half, or two years and three months. Harder. Like, I still feel the same with ban, you know, and we skip all this drama that was not necessary, didn't anything add up. Like, it wasn't necessary having boyfriends and everything. We still connect, we still, we're gonna give a shot. And then we go back to these prologues, like, Ben already leaving college, moving with Arthur, becoming a, a writer, like, f proposed to Arthur, and then the marriage. And then that makes sense. For me, this whole book doesn't make sense because the important parts could be summarized in prologues for the first one, and like a, be a really long prologue, of course, or not prologues, but chapters in the future for each character that will sum up what happened to these books. Because there were no development, there were no attraction, there was just awkwardness because oh, we still love each other, but we won't tell because, you know, and there was that part that really bothered me was like, I love Ben, but I love Mikey, and I will fight for Mikey. But then Mikey appears and like, why did you appear? Like, ah, No. No. Yeah, and I think that that's it. It's all the necessary drama, all the messy characters, the messy plot, the character development was very messy, the unnecessary, like, romance that it wasn't necessary. The end was ambiguous, yes, on what if it's us. Um, because we, and I don't mind we let open any, because for my interpretation, they could possibly meet two years after in New York or in another place, continue to have friends and then connect and find they were still in love. But I, I, I don't know, it's the relation and what i felt during the book was i couldn't root for arthur with mickey and ben with mario because we knew and i wanted ben to be with arthur from the first one but at the same time it's like why waste time in these relationships and why ex extremely excellent guys because they were good people mario was very into arthur even being ex-boyfriends with ben very fun very welcoming although Mikey was more reserved, but he was a good person. Why waste it? And then there was like a little bit of hate of Arthur between Mario because Mario is so perfect. I'm mad, isn't it? But I love Mikey, but I love Arthur, but I love Ben. It's like, fix your head. It's not that hard, please. You cannot hate someone because he's dating your ex when you're having a relationship, unless you're unhappy, but you don't say that. It's not that hard. One thing also that bothers me was like, 
It was deliberately hinted as a pop culture moment, a book by the author, by Adam Silvera. Like, like, you should stop read that book where they both die in the end. I'm like, could this be more obvious? Like, that's not even pop culture in, you know, in a sentiment that is super popular and is super talk everyone knows. Like, it's like propaganda in your own book, which is not bad. It's your own book, but it's like, could you say you also go see Love, Simon on cinema? And yeah, what I felt was that this was just two separate stories that will converge and they, they will meet again because we spend more time with Arthur and the other and Ben and the other than with two together with very mess up. They were, as I said, they don't didn't mature the characters as they should. I think they are still very young. We don't feel a difference between the two years that passed. Just the ending was just fighting because it was the happy ending that everyone was expecting. But besides that, we should cut up like 300 pages of the book or more because it's like no it didn't the writing is not also good uh, I, I don't know you know uh, uh, and that's it I think I cannot rent anymore but it's like why 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 I will leave in my memory just the first one cut everything about this book except the prologue and connect my pr the prologue with my own prologue in my mind that happened during this book and will be the story for me because no 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 it's not it's not it's not well done it's not it's not enjoyable because the things we like in the first one were not there the characters were not there the connections were not there why relationships when they will end up together why the drama like why put Arthur's best friend in the scene when she doesn't appear same thing with Dylan why make him like a character just to appear in some scenes I don't know I'm so disappointed like I'm so disappointed I think I was never so disappointed with a book like this it was like it hit hard and I think Probably I will be very sad after this because <sighs> no, 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 it didn't work. It didn't. I'm trying to think in something positive and I can't because it's like characters didn't matter, the secondaries, the principles didn't grow or didn't change, reasons are not there. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. And then it's like. Everything could be resolved if just they assume they are still in love and they confess. And be honest, but no, let's make this drama. <sighs> so, I think I rent enough for now. We will see more rent in the end of the year. Because definitely this book is going to be there as the biggest disappointment of the year. <sighs> oh, if you read it. If you if you have read it, tell me what you think. If you're gonna read it, tell me what how it is because if you like this, I want to understand why because I couldn't. It destroys me the first book completely. <sighs> so yeah, this was my rant for Here's to Us by Becca Bertelli and Adam Silvera. I hope you enjoy. I, I don't do rants a lot. It's not it's not typically me. But I had to. I had to explain everything out. Even if it's messy because I'm too emotional for this. Um, like, comment, subscribe. I have affiliate links below if you want to help the channel. Blackwell's Book Depository and Waterstones. I have a coffee and also Amazon wishlist. I post three videos a week. Saturday, um, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays around 6 p.m. GMT. I have live reading sprints on Fridays. 9 p.m. GMT also and I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye!